On October 28, 1858, Theodore Roosevelt was born into one of the wealthiest and most well-established families in New York. His father, Theodore Roosevelt Sr., was a gentleman and a glassware merchant. His wife, Martha Bullock, was descended from the southern aristocracy of Georgia. Despite the wealth and social position of his family, Roosevelt's young life was far from easy. He chronically suffered from violent attacks of asthma and poor eyesight. Yet his illness inspired him to embrace life all the more fully. To improve his health, he boxed and lifted dumbbells in a room in his home which he had converted into a gymnasium. In the fall of 1876, Roosevelt entered Harvard University. He excelled in his studies and graduated magna cum laude four years later. While at Harvard, he met Alice Lee, a beautiful young woman who would become his wife soon after graduation. By 1881, he had entered politics as a New York Assemblyman. Social unrest was his main concern as New York Assemblyman. While he served as a New York City Police Commissioner in 1895, he worked alongside Jacob Riss, the author and social reformer, to improve living conditions in the tenement districts. During his early years in politics, Roosevelt enjoyed success in his professional life, but suffered personal tragedy privately. In 1884, his mother died of typhoid fever. Two days later, his wife died after giving birth to their first child, Alice Lee. Although he would go on to marry Edith K. Caro, a family friend since childhood, he continued to blame himself for his inconsistency to the memory of Alice. entered the war against Spain and began an imperialist course which would end with the acquisition of colonies in the Caribbean and the Pacific. Roosevelt, believing staunchly in American democracy and the expansion of its ideals, was vehemently in favor of U.S. involvement. Roosevelt returned as a war hero to an adoring American public, and his popularity won him the governorship of New York in 1898. As governor, he again defied what was expected of him. Roosevelt attacked the political bosses and the monopolistic big businessmen, labeling them as the wealthy criminal class. The New York Republican boss, Thomas C. Platt, responded by influencing Roosevelt's nomination to the vice presidency in 1900. But when President McKinley was shot and killed by an anarchist just one year later, Roosevelt could not have been in a better position. He took the oath of office as the 26th and youngest president of the United States. In his role as president, Roosevelt expanded the powers of the executive office. He functioned as a moderate progressive, affecting legislation which was pro-environment, supporting labor in the anthracite coal strike of 1902. The theme of his administration was fairness for all. He promised a square deal for all groups of people. 
This made him an enemy to the big business interest, who had been favored under McKinley's administration and a hero to the common man. While adored during his presidency, Roosevelt often pushed at the boundaries of his power and influence. He backed the square deal with a big stick in both domestic and international matters. His assertive way of using the big stick yielded him great fame. In 1905, he became the first American to win the Nobel Peace Prize after mediating and arranging peace terms between Germany and Russia in the Treaty of Portsmouth. Remaining true to a statement he made when he took the oath of office for a second time in 1904, Roosevelt did not run for a third term. But when the policies of his hand-chosen successor, William Howard Taft, did not coincide with his own, he became determined to run again in 1912. His campaign backfired when the Republican Party split into factions and facilitated the election of the Democratic candidate, Woodrow Wilson. Roosevelt was all the more eager to remain active in political affairs. When not criticizing Wilson's reticence to enter the war, Roosevelt petitioned for permission to assemble a band of men in the Rough Rider fashion and go himself. He was denied the opportunity and suffered a severe loss when his youngest son, Quentin, was killed in aerial combat. In 1918, Roosevelt was diagnosed with inflammatory rheumatism. After a night of feeling especially fatigued, he died on the morning of January 6, 1919, at Sagamore Hill, his home in New York. He had lived an energetic and intense life, which would establish his memory in the hearts of many as one of the most dynamic leaders in the country's history.